Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today for this yin yoga practice for a deep hip release. So you may want to make your space a little cozier. I have a blanket set out on my mat and maybe an additional blanket and two blocks. And this practice is great to do at any time of the day. Let's get started. We'll start in a seat. You might sit on a blanket and just start to tune it to your body and notice how it feels right now. So in a seat that feels comfortable to you, invite a nice long spine and just begin to notice maybe areas of your body that are feeling tight or tense. So we're going to begin our first pose in what's called butterfly. So you might sit on a blanket with your feet out in front of you, making a diamond shape with your legs. And once you come into position, you want to hinge from your hips just a little bit. If you're not on a blanket, you might feel like you're rounding the spine a little bit. So I encourage you to sit up on a blanket. It helps to lift the hips and tilt the pelvis forward. Once you've come into your edge of sensation, you might bring blocks like little armrests. You might also just stay up on your hands. That's totally fine or any other variation that works for you. So we'll be here just over three minutes. So once you've come into your edge of sensation where you might be feeling a little bit of sensation of stretch in the outer hips, we'll hold for time. In yin, we come into poses a little softer and slower than a typical practice. So once you've found your edge of sensation, see if you can soften into the pose. You might soften your shoulders a little bit. You might even consider supporting your head. Maybe moving the blocks up to the higher setting, bringing your hands together in a prayer position and just resting your head on the back of your thumbs. That can feel really nice. If you're not supporting your head, let your neck be long rather than allowing your head to hang. Invite your hips to be heavy and soft. And you can use your breath to breathe into the area of the outer hips where you're most likely feeling the sensation and encouraging that area of tension and tightness to begin to relax and release. Always make sure that knees are feeling okay and that your back is okay and that there's no sharp sensation at all. It should feel like just a feeling of stretch which might be intense or sensational at times. But just always listen to your body. Sometimes after coming into a pose and holding it maybe for a couple minutes, you might notice some reactions of the mind. Sometimes the mind presents some resistance, which is part of the fight of the fight or flight response. Or maybe we want to run away 
And that's the flight of the fight or flight response. Or perhaps we just complain and that's really connected to the freeze of the fight, flight, or freeze response. So the suffering through it, the complaining, the being the victim is also another aspect of the sympathetic response. So if that occurs, just notice that and see if you can soften it and come back to being present and aware, maybe inviting a sense of curiosity and just being present without any resistance. So take a nice full inhale here and a nice soft sigh of an exhale, let it go. And then on your next inhale, press yourself back up. You might use your hands to bring the knees back up. Coming out of that butterfly pose, you might come off of that blanket you were sitting on. Lean back on your hands, widen your feet, and then drop your knees over to one side for some counter pose action here called windshield wipers. And then bring your knees up, feet are wide, and drop your knees over to the other side. So often coming out of yin poses, you may notice a sensation, maybe a feeling of vulnerability and fragility. That's the yin echo. So it means we got into the joints the way we wanted. So our next pose, we're going to still remain seated for the next pose, can sometimes be tricky for many people. It's called shoelace, and I'm going to show you a few options. So the first option is crossing one leg over the other, so the knees are sort of close like you're sitting in a chair, and then bringing the knees closer to the mat. Now, if the bottom knee is complaining just a little bit, you might place a blanket under that bottom knee. Sometimes that's all you need. If the top knee is the one that's not feeling very good, maybe just a block under it for some support is all you need. But if either of those actions or props just don't seem to help and knees are not happy, then you might consider maybe bringing the top knee up and the foot a little closer to the other thigh. Or you can do half shoelace, straighten out the bottom leg and bring the top leg across the other thigh. And if it's okay to hinge forward without too much pressure on the bottom leg's knee, this might work. If the bottom knee is not happy, again, you might use a blanket. Maybe opening your blanket up and just rolling it a little bit and placing a little bit of a rolled blanket or towel under that bottom knee. And sometimes that makes it a lot more doable. So find your variation for shoelace. I'm going to take that blanket behind me again. So notice which leg is on top. Start with your easier side that feels most doable to you. Sort of showing the other side, this is how it's done. So another option, if this is just not working for your knees, is to come into square. It's another yin pose where your legs are making a triangle, even though it's called square, making a triangle shape, front shin, parallel to your blanket or mat, and the feet are going out towards the knees. So instead of a cross leg position where the ankles are close together and close to your hips, square has the feet moving away from each other and towards the opposite knees. And then you'll hinge forward. So find your variation, either shoelace or square, and notice which leg is on top or in front if you're doing square. Start to hinge forward from your hips. You might use your hands for support. And again, you should feel this in your outer hips, one maybe more than the other. I'm feeling it more in my top legs, outer hip. And again, you can stay here with your hands supporting you, or you can bring those blocks again for a little armrests. You can use other props if you have them handy, maybe a bolster. 
Just find your variation. And then see if you can relax into this pose. And if you're not supporting your head, you might just keep the neck long. Invite your feet to relax and invite your legs to soften and release. Imagine you're inviting the muscles in your legs to release their hold of the bones. And just invite your bones, especially in the hips, to sink towards the earth. It's also very important to drink water before and after a yin practice to help rehydrate the tissues. Once we get into the fascia a little bit more, it's, it's sort of like a sponge and it will absorb water from other parts of our bodies. So you need to replenish that water and you may even feel thirsty. And drinking water will also help give you the most benefit from this practice. And this is also a wonderful practice to do right before bed. Getting into the hips with some nice stretches can really help promote a nice restful sleep. And feel free to find variations of supporting your arms or your hand positions at any time. If you notice there's any tension building up in your body, you can use your breath to help release any tightness that starts to arise. Breathe here. And you can send the breath to the area where you're feeling the most sensation of stretch and encourage that area to soften and relax and release. And then begin to deepen your breath. Take a nice full inhale and a soft sigh of an exhale, let it go. Before we come out of this pose, we're going to do a little bit of a stretch. So just come up a little bit with your upper body, but leave your legs where they are if you can. Notice which leg is on top or in front, and we're going to do a side bend to the same side as the front or top leg. So my right leg is on top, I'm going to side bend to my right, so place your same hand down to support you and reach up your opposite arm and then a little side bend. Position your bottom hand where it makes sense to you. And if you want to deepen the stretch, you might bend that top arm, maybe even reaching towards the other side of your head to support your head and look up slightly. Find your variation. Just notice how this feels. On your next inhale, reach that top arm back up and come all the way back up. Lean back on your hands, uncross those legs, straighten them out for a moment. And the other side is going to be our counter pose. So come into the opposite side, either shoelace or square. And since we started with our more comfortable side, this side might feel a little more challenging. So you might need a blanket under the bottom knee or a block supporting the top leg. And again, if knees complain, maybe straighten the bottom leg. 
for half shoelace or come into square. Square is a great hip stretch in and of itself, but it can also be a nice alternative to shoelace. Making sure knees are happy. And then start to hinge to come forward, hinging from your hips to come forward. Again, you might support yourself on your hands. Or you might use those blocks. I like my block armrests. Find your variation. If you can come forward enough, you might be able to support your head with your hands. But if it feels like you're straining to do that, then find another variation. Invite your legs to relax and soften. Inviting the muscles to release their hold of the bones, especially around your hips. And just allow the bones to be heavy as if they're sinking towards the earth. Notice sensation. And notice if there's any reaction in the mind. Has the mind gone to either the fight or flight or freeze response? Is there any resistance trying to change what you're experiencing? Or is there that sense that you want to run away, come out of the pose maybe too soon? Or maybe there's just some complaining and internal suffering going on. Whatever it is, just notice it. And then see if you can gently come back to being present and aware. Inviting a sense of curiosity into your experience. And you might notice also if it's the same response, whether it's wanting to fight, flight, or suffer. <laughs> If it's the same type of response you have during challenges in life situations. I know there's one I tend to go towards more. So just being aware of that helps us grow and evolve and be more mindful and maybe choose more wise, thoughtful responses rather than reactions when other challenges arise off the map. So again, begin to deepen your breath. Take a nice full inhale and a soft sigh of an exhale. Let it go. Keep your legs where they are. And on your inhale, start to press your weight back up. Pause for a moment. Notice your top leg or the leg in front and reach that hand out beside you. Reach your opposite arm up and then side bent over to the other side here. Choose your gaze. You might look up. Option to bend that top arm. Hand might reach around to support the head and you might gaze up. Be mindful of shoulders here. And if your hand is on your head, slowly straighten that arm up. 
push off of that bottom hand and lower the arms down. Lean back on your hands and release those legs, straightening them out. Maybe point and flex through your feet. So now we're going to come into dragons. Dragons can be a little intense, but we're going to find some variations while we're in the dragons. And it makes the time go a little faster. So bring your blocks to the front of your mat. You might want a blanket on your mat if you don't already have one there. And dragons are similar to low lunges or lizard in a Hatha practice. And there's some engagement in our muscles, but not as much as in a Hatha practice. So in yin, we have a little more softness into the muscles so that we can get into the joints more easily. Come to kneeling with your hands on blocks and step your right foot forward in between your hands and blocks, coming into baby dragon. So from baby dragon, you can either stay here with your hands on the blocks, framing your front foot, and it's okay with the knee down and your hands on the blocks to have the knee a little bit in front of the ankle. Normally that's not something we want. So this is one variation of baby dragon. Another variation is to bring the blocks on the tall setting and sort of walk them back closer to your hips and be a little more upright. Now from here, you can have the hips forward a little bit or they might be back. Listen to what your hip flexors and left thigh want to do here. And this can be another nice option if your wrists don't like the weight being on the blocks. So now we're going to bring the blocks back to frame the front foot and bring the block on the right side to the inside of that front foot and toe heel that foot out to the edge of your mat. Turn the blocks maybe on the low setting you can find what works best for you. Just an option to come down onto your forearms for dragon flying low. Some of you may be able to just bring your forearms to the mat. That's another option. If you're using the blocks on the medium setting, make sure that they feel stable. Maybe bring in your hands or fingers to touch. While we're here, option to go deeper if you want. You can tuck the back toes and lift the back knee. And this is now fire breathing dragon and you'll immediately know why. <laughs> and you can stay here for as long or as short as you want. Usually a couple seconds is all I want to do. And then you can release the bottom foot. You can find a little movement in your hips side to side. Notice how that feels. keeping your neck long, or you might just find stillness, letting your hips sink towards the earth. There's still some engagement in the upper shoulder girdle and a little bit into the legs as well, so you're not completely hanging in the ligaments. And our last variation is coming into a variation of wing dragon and twisted dragon. So wing dragon is letting the front knee go out to the right a little bit. Keep your ankle active so you're coming a little more to the outer edge of that front foot. And then adding a twist, you can stay down on your left forearm or you can come up onto your left hand and bring your right hand to your right thigh or knee. This can be quite intense. So if it's too much for you, 
Just stay where you feel you need to be. We'll be here for just a few more breaths. Breathe here. And the other thing about yin is especially coming out of the poses, totally fine to groan, <laughs> make noises, just go, oh my goodness. Coming out of dragons is when I usually make some noise. <laughs> couple more breaths here. Take one more breath here. And as you exhale, unwind. Bring your hands back underneath you. Maybe set the blocks aside. Take an inhale and slowly push into your hands to send those hips back. Oh my goodness. And bring your hands on either side of that front leg. Keep a little bend in that front knee. Lift the front toes up and come into a little half split. So a little bit of a counter pose here before we do the other side. And then bring that right hand on the inside of that leg. Swing that leg around and we'll do the other side. I'm gonna turn around so that when I twist, I can see you and you can see me better. So initially the other side feels like a nice counter pose too. So bring your left foot forward, coming into baby dragon. Again, you might keep your hands on the blocks, framing your front foot or you might bring the blocks up into this baby dragon variation. So find your variation, you can adjust where you have the blocks, where it feels best to you. And notice where you're feeling the stretch. Notice where you feel the sensation. Invite your hips to be a little bit heavy towards the mat but there's still some action in that front foot and your hands and arms are still supporting you a little bit. And then we're going to move into that dragon flying low. Frame your front foot with the blocks and then bring that left hand and block on the inside of that foot Toe heel that foot out to the left edge of your mat. And then maybe use your blocks for little arm rests. If you prefer to stay up on your hands, that's totally fine too. But it can be a little tiring on the wrists. You can also use a bolster on top of the blocks, making a little bit of a higher platform to rest on. And then you might even rest your head on your hands. Find what feels best to you. Again, a little movement in your hips side to side might be nice. And the left foot is turned out slightly, maybe toward like about 11 o'clock. And if you did that fire breathing dragon on the first side, you might explore it on this side, tucking the back toes, lift your back knee. Notice how that feels. So this is definitely probably one of the most engaging poses as far as our muscles in yin is this fire breathing dragon. Lowering the knee down whenever you feel you're ready. Again, you might find little movement maybe into the shoulders or hips. Just slowly exploring or you might find stillness. Dragons can feel intense. Option now for wing dragon. Taking that left knee slightly out to the left. It doesn't have to be a lot. And as you do that, keeping your ankle active, it just naturally comes more towards the outer edge of that front foot so that the inner arch just lifts a little bit. 
So you don't want to sickle the ankle. You don't want to collapse the ankle. The ankle is still engaged slightly. And then option for that twist, staying on your right forearm or coming up onto your right hand. Bring your left hand onto that left leg and look to your left. You might step onto that hand more like this or down on the forearm, whatever feels best to you. You hold a lot of tension, tightness, emotions, even trauma in our bodies, especially our hips. So it's not uncommon to have things arise emotionally when we're getting into deep poses. One more breath here. And then as you exhale, unwind. Oh, bring your hands underneath you. Coming out of dragons can be quite challenging. Send your hips back a little bit. Hands on either side of that front leg, maybe with blocks. Keep that front knee bent a little bit. Lift the front toes up. A little bit of a counter pose here. We're going to come into another counter pose that feels really great after dragons in just a second. So coming up out of this, bring that block on the inside of that leg and swing that leg around. Now a pose that I think just feels quite nice after dragons is a downward facing dog. If you don't want to do a down dog, you might come into a forward fold or whatever pose you think would feel good to you. I'm going to fold my blanket up a little so I can have more mat space. Tucking your toes, lift your hips up and back and come into a downward facing dog. Oh, that feels so good after those dragons. You might bend your knees, pedaling your feet. You might press into your hands as you reach your hips up. Notice how this feels. Nice full breaths. Notice those hips and legs. Nice long spine. And then lower the knees down. Bring yourself back onto your mat. Pause for a moment. And then lay down for Shavasana. So you might want to have socks on if you're cold. You might want to have a blanket over you. You might want a blanket under your head. Whatever feels good to you. You might have your legs out a little wider. You might have a blanket for a pillow. So as you lay down, maybe invite those legs to be a little wider, arms maybe a little wider away from you. Notice sensation moving through your body and invite your whole body to be heavy and soft. Relaxing a little deeper into the support of the mat and blankets beneath you. Release into gravity. Letting your feet and legs be heavy and soft. Bring your awareness to your hips. And notice any sensation or energy moving through your hips. And invite your hips to relax and release and let go. Release your spine. Relax the low back, the mid back, and your upper back. Soften your shoulders and arms. 
Let your head be heavy. Soften all the muscles in your face, especially around your eyes, and let go. Gently bring your awareness back to being on your mat. Notice your body. Notice your breath and observe your mind. 
Whenever you feel ready, begin to make small movements, wiggle fingers, toes, rotate wrists or ankles, whatever would feel good. Eventually bend one knee and then the other and consider rolling over to your left side to balance out the yin and yang and opening up the right nostril, the yang side. Pause there for a moment. And when you feel ready, slowly press your way back up to a comfortable seat. And notice how you feel. And with appreciation for your awareness and your focus, bring your hands together at your heart in Anjali Mudra. The light in me sees and honors the light in each of you. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that deep hip release. Remember to drink plenty of water, rehydrate those tissues, and check out some of the other videos. And be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the mats.